So we'll get into the study today. And um, we'll continue our study on uh, planning 2023. All right? Planning 2023. And we have looked at a lot of things. So we're going to continue um, looking at them here uh, by God's grace. And um, so um, planning 2023. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So God has plans and he has thoughts. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So God is not about thinking evil towards you. Get that. Very important. All right. Even when people think God is thinking judgment. No. The Bible says the wrath of God is already revealed on all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men. We know what that means. It means God has set up a system where his displeasure has already been released against all unrighteousness in all realms that are his realm. You understand? All realms of existence <clears throat> is displeasure for anything that is contrary to purity, his nature, and his excellence. His displeasure has already been released. All right? So whenever those things show up, that displeasure hits it. That's why when Satan rebelled, that displeasure hitted him immediately. You understand? So it's already released. The, the wrath of God is already released on all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men. So God is not sitting down now and thinking evil towards anybody. No. And most of the time when prophets come and prophesy that, oh, this is going to happen because of a prophecy of judgment, they are just announcing what the wrath of God is going to do if the person doesn't repent. So, but consistently, what is in the thought of God for people are peace. If they will accept his will, you understand? And 2023 is just uh, right in front of us. We need to get ourselves ready. And we've been looking at this, and I need you to listen today and go and put to practice these things. Please do it. A plan is a map from where you are to where you are going. Don't forget we said that. A plan is a map from where you are to where you want to go. In the, those days before we have um, all these GPS, Google Maps on our phones, you get a physical paper plan. Oh, sorry, map. And when you get the map, you begin to look for where you are going. So if you're going to the city center, you are able to see the city center. You're able to see the street you want to go. Then the next thing you have to do is now locate where you are. Where are you on this map? So you ask around, excuse me, uh, what's this place called? Oh, this place is called so, so and so. So you go and look. If you look at some of the maps you see on the walls and the um, lobbies and the um, elevator lobbies of hotels, they always say this is where you are. You see a map, you know, because that's an escape map. So that in case of emergency, you know where to turn. So when you look at the map, you see that red spot that they start, that's where you are in that building. Because they know that you will not be able to locate where you are supposed to go if you don't know where you are. Where you are is so important. And a lot of times, people ignore that. They are looking at where they are going, but they are not looking at where they are because you can only plan properly from where you are to where you want to go. It's going to be difficult to jump into where you want to go if you cannot locate where you are and clearly draw a map, a, sorry, a plan, a step-by-step -step plan from where you are to where you want to go. Very important. So a map is, sorry, a plan is a map from where you are to where you want to go. So a plan is supposed to have where you are at the moment and also the place you want to go. Then it is also supposed to have the detailed chart of the paths and steps to where you want to be. So drawing plan must be done with these things in, ma in mind. With the clear focus, the start is for you to locate where you are in different areas of your life. So you need to first locate where, where am I in my communion with God? Okay, where I am now is that 
I am I'm consistent with keeping my koinonia time, but um, uh, I'm not sure in my reception from God, oh, I'm already worshiping and reading scriptures. And as I'm reading scriptures, I see God is speaking to me because light is coming to me as I'm reading. And then some verses are speaking about what I'm going through. So God is already doing that in my life. So you know that's where you are now. So you need to go forward. How do I get from here to now being able to hear God either inside or in my ears and be able to talk back to him and me and him having conversation? How do I move to that? Because that's the destination in, in Koinonia. That's the destination. All right? And you can fix different destinations before that final one. So there's a need to know for each aspect of your life, from your intimate work with God to your family life, to finance, to health, to work, business, profession, career, academics, to social life, and so on. You need to write down where you were at the beginning of this, because that's also important. Because some people don't know where they were some time ago, so they can't measure their progress. How much progress did I make in 12 months? Where was I in my finance in January? How much income was I earning in January? How much income am I earning now? Did I reduce, did I increase? It's important to know. Where were you at the beginning of this year? And, and where are you now? Capture the distance covered or lost. If you lost some distance, why? And please don't blame it on the economy. Hello, 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 hello. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Don't blame it on the economy. Don't say, oh, there's no money. The economy has been bad. Yes. But while others are saying there's a casting down, you are supposed to be saying there's a lifting up. Why are you not saying there's a lifting up? Ask yourself sincere questions. Don't dodge it. Why? Why am I not saying there's a lifting up? Why? When others are cast down, why am I not lifted up? Because I'm supposed to be lifted up. You understand? Why? What is it? Did I reduce in my giving? Because that's very crucial to prosperity for the believer. Did I reduce in my giving? How consistent have I been in my tithing? Those are the things to look at. Not to condemn yourself. You don't look at those things to condemn yourself. No. But to look at what am I not doing right? What have I been doing right? Is my economy better? Is my character better? You know, all these things are important. You need to write them down clearly. Capture the distance covered or lost. All these will help you locate yourself properly. Know how far you have come. It will help you to be able to appropriate properly thanksgivings for how far he has brought you and helped you. Because if you're able to know this was where I was at the beginning of this year financially. This is where I am now. I've increased. I've covered some distance. What was I doing different this year? Oh, I was showing more appreciation to God. I did more confession this year. I personally did more confession this year than any other year. Yes. So you, how far? What, what is it? The next thing after, because you need to capture where you are properly. How much distance have you covered? How far have you gone? And if you've lost, why? What happened? You understand? Because you're supposed to have made progress. The part of the just you are the just. And don't let the devil lie to you that, oh, because you are you are not perfect. In but no, no, no. You are first the just. Then you have to live like the just. So the first thing is that you are the just. That's who you are. Living as the just is the second thing. The first thing is who you are. You are the just. And he said the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. Have you gone brighter and brighter? Or you went dimmer and dimmer? If you went dimmer and dimmer, Why? Why were you discouraged? What, what, what happened? You understand? You say, okay, if that's my situation, what will I be thanking God? Thank God that you're alive. Thank God that you are still breathing. Thank God that you have not given up. Okay, what if I've given up? Thank God that you didn't die when you gave up. Some people gave up and lost their brain. They are insane now. They are in, in one mental hospital. Thank God you didn't become, you didn't have stroke. You didn't lose your limb. Give thanks to God. There's something to thank God for in the midst of it all. And then, now whatever and wherever you are, once you have located it, then you can locate, you can move to where you want to go. It's going to be easier than not know where you are and wanting to jump to where you want to go. The next thing to do is to take out time 
to ask God to reveal to you what his plans are for you for the new year, for each of these aspects of your life that you are focused on. So list different aspects of your life and then say, Daddy, what is your will for this, all these aspects? I ask that you put that your will in my heart and mind in the name of Jesus. And I need you to work on this. Listen, those of us who can hear God clearly and you can ask God and God will tell you immediately, ask him, let him tell you and write down whatever he tells you. Those of us who are still learning, uh, you are still picking something, even those of us who hear God clearly, sometimes God will not tell you everything. He will want you to also bring it out from your thoughts by aligning your thoughts with, your, with his thoughts. And that's what we taught here. Look at it. So once you have asked God, you have asked your father, show me, reveal to me, what's your plan for 2023? Reveal to me your plan for 2023 concerning my finance, concerning my health, concerning my family, concerning my business, concerning my work with you, my communion with you, my character, my service in the kingdom. You ask for all the different aspects of your life that are important to you, all right? Then once you have asked God, you, need, you then need to settle down and start writing what you will want to see and placing them before him in prayer for about two weeks. All right? For about two weeks. Now, we have a week to the end of the year now. Between now and next week, the year has ended. In fact, next Saturday, the year ends. So you have a week. Write it down. Today, sit down. After this morning devotion, sit down somewhere quietly for one hour. To, you'll be struck that you'll be there for two hours. And begin to take each aspect of your life and write down what do you really want. And if you have not located where you are, start with that one first. Where am I now in family life? Where am I now in my communion with God? Where am I now in my service in the kingdom? Where am I now in my finances? And when you check your finances, where am I in my tithing? Have I been consistent in tithing this year? Can I say 100% I tithe all through this year? Or I was 50% in tithe this year? You know, check it out. Particularly when it comes to finance, you must check out your tithing. You must check out your giving towards God's work. How much of God's work have I supported? All these intimacy outreaches we have done, how much have you put your funds into? Or you are just a receiver who doesn't give. You can't be receiving and not give. You have to give. That's why this, that's how you connect to flow of greater grace. You have some grace already that you have on your own. You don't need PhD to have that grace. You already have that one. But when you now support what the intimacy movement is all about, you add extra and you keep adding extra as you give, as you support. How much have you done that this year? Yes, those are the things to check. In my health, where am I? How far have I gone this year? Have I improved? I said I will stop eating something. Did I stop those things? I said I will reduce this. Did I reduce it? I said I will exercise. Have I started exercising? Very important. I take a morning walk discussing with God, but that morning walk is also helping my body in exercise. Because my doctor told me that if you take 30 minutes walk every day, he actually said 20 minutes, every single day. He said you, you'll, be, you'll be more fit than somebody that is jogging once a week. Listen, it's very important. Write it. Then now ask God what you have for next year. Then when you have done asking, then start writing what you want. Because when you are writing, you'll be writing what God wants and what you want, all of it together. And one scripture works for you. Proverbs in chapter 19, verse 21. Put it down, put it down. Proverbs 19, 21. Uh, sorry, I forgot to put this study. Proverbs 19, 21. It works for you. It says... There are many devices in the art of a man. Many, there are many thoughts, plans, opinions, ideas in the art of a person. He said, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord has that. So what are you supposed to do? Write down that thing for each area. After you've located yourself, write down what you want for 2023 for each area. Write it, write it, write it, write it. Two, three, four, five things, ten things, whatever. Just write for each area. Then when you are finished writing, now tell God, Daddy, I'm coming back to this. I want all of this to be your perfect will. Then within one week, because we have one week to the end of the year now, within one week, go back to that thing at least three times. If you can't do it at all, after you write it today, go, go through it again two times at least. But if you can do three times, excellent. Between now and next Saturday, go through it three times. Sit down again one evening or one morning and go through it again. 
and edit, remove some things, add some things as it comes to you. But each time you are sitting, say, Father, I want your perfect will. Breathe your thoughts into my thoughts as I refine and, re and check through and review these things that I've written for 2023. Those of us who have done prophetic presbytery, write based on that prophetic presbytery too. Make sure those things that God told you in the prophetic presbytery, you had it there. And those who miss prophetic presbytery, we're going to give one just one more opportunity next Tuesday. All right, once we get the ministers together, we'll send out the link so you can re-register for that one Tuesday. So look out for that. All right? So you write it. So you go through it three times, reviewing, asking God, Lord, let it be your thoughts. And then you review. While you are reviewing, God will be pouring his thoughts into your thought. At the end of the day, whatever you are finally, after you've checked it twice or three times, it will be the will of God for you. And if any at all is not even the will of God, I tell you as you are pursuing it, listen very carefully. I'm telling you this. Anything you write there that may not be the will of God after you have gone through it, review it three times, praying, Father, bring your thoughts upon my thoughts. I want this to be your perfect will for me. And you're just writing from your own thoughts. But you see, he's breathing his thoughts on your thoughts. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if, and I tell you, after three times, it will be the will of God. But in case there's any one of it that is still not the will of God, as you will be pursuing that thing, God will be directing you into his will ultimately. You know why? Because you are seeking his will. It will order your steps. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your steps. It's a covenant. It's a promise from your father. He said, as long as you are acknowledging him, you are not writing that thing from, okay, let me just write what I want to achieve in 2023. You are saying, father, I want your will. You are acknowledging God. Ah, he will direct your steps. It is, it is, it is, it is a reality. It is truth that cannot fail. The moment you acknowledge God and you are diligent about it, he will direct your steps. He will order your steps. So even if you by mistake have written something that is not supposed to be, he will still redirect your steps while you are pursuing that thing into his will in that area of your life. So by the end of 2023, you will be in the will of God. Because when you acknowledge him, he directs your steps. All right? And the moment you have that, all right? The moment you have written down all that I plans, you start speaking it. Take each of those things, the end result you want to have, construct it into a confession. Write down the confession. That's your personal confession for 2023. And I think what I'm going to do is the 31st crossover service and the anointing service on the first Sunday of the year, which is uh, uh, going to be at 11 a.m. in Elohim, and whether you're joining online or physical, write down those confessions. I'm, I'm going to pray over it. All right? Write it. This is... So, in my koinonia with God, you, what is the end result you want? Create a confession for it. I am intimate with God. I'm consistent in my koinonia time. I hear God, I and God have conversation discussing clearly in the name of Jesus. That's where I am now, in Jesus' name. That's your confession of God, communion. Maybe your finance. My three businesses have become a multi-million, whatever your currency is, businesses. Generate, and they are generating this amount of income annually or monthly, depending on what you want. My business, my three businesses are, the, are this, da, 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 and they are generating this amount monthly or, or, or yearly. You speak it. You create confession. My health is perfect. I am now exercising. I eat accurate and well in the name of Jesus. You declare those things. Create confessions for each end result, not the path. You can create some confession for the, for the process later, but the end result first, and that will be your confession for 2023. And I guarantee you this, this is a guarantee. This is a guarantee. I know I've shot 
beyond time now. But listen, this is the guarantee. If you create that confession, you do those things that say, create that confession because you are following the path of your father. This is how your father creates. Is there from the way the world teaches you how to do smart goals and all that? This is, this is different because smart goals and all that work sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. This one works all the time. Why? Because this is how your father creates. He thinks, he writes down his plan, he speaks them, and then he goes to work on them. And that's what we'll be looking at next Saturday. How to go and go to work on those things. You plan it, you write it out, and then you speak them. Then you go to work on them. They are, they are all, I tell you, 100% you can get results. I know sometimes some people are not so diligent, so they may not get 100%, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you this. By the end of 2023, even if you are not so diligent, there are people who are very diligent, they will get 100%. Those diligent people, they will get 100%. When I said those diligent people, all of us are diligent people, but some of us are perfected diligence. So those who are perfected diligence will have 100%. But those who are even still struggling with diligence, I guarantee you this. Like my teacher in secondary school told me, the least student in my class will have a C6 in math. And that was true. Even though I was a truant, I didn't, I was dancing all over the place. That's when I sat for O-level, my first O-level sitting. I failed. I had only P8. That's a pass in chemistry. And guess where, where I had the credit? Mathematics. Why? Because my math teacher told me. Every one of us in the class said the least of you will have a C6. That's the last credit. So because you can't fail math in my class. It's impossible. I guarantee you this. By the mercies of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the truth that I presented to you this morning, that if you do these things and you will create this confession of what the end goal will be, by the end of 2023, December, at least you'll be at six, between 60 and 70% fruit. I guarantee you that. Do you understand? By the help of the Holy Spirit, by the power of God, because it's not me, I'm not the one that's going to create the miracle for you, but I'm so sure of this truth of God. And your confession, don't say, I will, my business will be, mm -mm. My, my three businesses are now, and they are generating now, this amount monthly and this amount to. Uh, annually, whichever way you want to construct it. Construct it like you already possess it. Create those confessions. Keep to it throughout the year. By December, you'll be at 60 to 70% fruitfulness. I tell you. One more instruction we're going to add next week, and that's how to work on it. Because if you keep all these instructions, I guarantee you that by the mercies of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, so you say, why is Pastor Paul repeating this thing? Because I'm telling you, you can make your life better. Yes. You can literally move your life forward. You can literally do that. Sometimes people, people set big targets that they can't work on. I mean, that's okay. But listen, just set a target that you know you, you, are, you are going to really commit to. Do, but set, it, set a target that is beyond your capacity. Because you, you, the only way you are sure you have added God is if you are able to do something that's beyond you. Yeah. So look at what, what can I do? Then add maybe times two or times three to it. And pursue it! And follow this plan, this process. All right? Create the goal, the vision for each aspect. And I've told you how to create it write it, ask God, and do all that process, then turn it to confession. The end result, turn it to confession. And then start speaking it. And then the lesson of next week that we'll learn on this, add it to it, you will have at least 60 to 70% fruit result. Let us pray. Pray with me and say, Father, I receive your help to do that which you are teaching us now. And I receive your grace to walk in your perfect counsel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, say so with me, say in the name of Jesus. By this time next year, I am better 
richer, stronger, and more intimate with God. I have become the friend of God. I hear him clearly. I walk with him. He has done marvelous things in my life. My increase is all over the place. All things are working, have worked well for me. All things are produced excellently for me. I have been in the mercies of God and his beauties have been with me throughout 2023. This is my testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.